Hey there friends, Brugal Green Girl again, and today I am going to do a quick video on some DIY medical stuff. Why on earth would anybody want to do that? Well, I definitely don't want to give advice to anyone out there. Instead, I just want to come from a place where I'm explaining what it is that we do as a family and why it is we do what we do. So basically, of course, we're, you know, all of us in the United States are required to have medical insurance. And for us, what that looks like is a fairly large bill that we have to pay out of our paychecks every single pay, to pay period. And while it covers a lot of things, like if you know you want a yearly physical or a checkup or whatnot, usually those are free. But then if we go in for something, you know, say my child has pink eye or whatnot, and we have to go to a doctor, that's going to cost a fair amount of money. I mean, they'll cover some of it, but they don't cover all of it, and then we have to pay the balance. So I'm a little bit frustrated with the uh, medical system because it seems like the way things are set up now, it can cost no money when we don't need the insurance, and then it costs a lot of money when we do. <laughs> when we actually have something we need to go in for, it costs still too much. So, you know, for years my family has been doing, you know, most of our medical stuff at home, and we just basically avoid the doctor when we can. We'll just try and take care of whatever we can at home, first aid wise, as well as sick care, and for us it really works out pretty well. I like to separate things into categories just because it makes it easier for my mind, but basically, in my mind there's three categories of people. So there's the people who, you know, want to use the medical system for everything. You know, anything the doctor says, you know, they'll do it, whatever. All the, you know, conventional medicines and things like that. Very, very conventional, very, very, you know, the normal way. And then there's the opposite end of the spectrum, and that's going to be people who are, you know, the crunchy types. The ones who will do things, you know, the more natural way. When they get a problem, you know, they have an issue or whatnot, they're not going to take those medicines, they're going to use herbs and natural things and things like that. And then there's, of course, the people in the middle. They're more integrative, you know. They'll try the herbal stuff first, and then if it doesn't work out, they'll resort, you know, to the conventional methods and things like that. Uh, but they're willing to do a combination of both. I would say that we're somewhere more toward that side, um, the natural, but we're also willing to, you know, resort to the conventional if needed. So, you know, but more and more we're, you know, progressing and there's more and more natural ways that I'm finding to treat things and so, you know, when they're useful and they work, why, you know, use all the chemical methods and all those, you know, medications that have all the side effects and things like that, especially when you can find alternatives. So just to let you know that's where we're at on this. And then as far as how people are, you know, the people who run to the doctor on any little thing, and then there's the people who won't go unless they're dying. I would say we're somewhere, again, in the middle on that one. We really don't go to the doctor very often. Um, it has to be something that's pretty serious. Most of the things that the doctors do, we can do at home. So, you know, yeah, just to give you the idea, we pretty much never go to the doctor because most of that stuff we can handle at home and it is okay to do for us at home. So let me just start with some of the medical supplies that I feel you need to have stocked because the only way that you're, we are going to be able to do medical care at home is if we're prepared for it. So without going too far into things, this is the number one thing that I would highly recommend. Some sort of a first aid book because knowledge is power. As long as you have the knowledge on what to do, you can do it at home. So, you know, you may not know what to do for a spider bite or whatnot, but if you get something like this, you know, maybe not this specific one, but something similar to this, some sort of a first aid book, and it tells you that when you go to the ER and you have a spider bite, they're just going to give your kid, you know, some sort of antihistamine, or you, of course, um, then you know why go to the ER, you could just give your, you know, kid or yourself um, some antihistamines at home. So, you know, have something like this and then study it. This particular one has some pretty graphic pictures um, in it, and so um, maybe if that sort of thing bothers you, you may not want this particular one, but yeah, have this and then um, study it so that you know what to do when something arises rather than, oh no, you have a problem, and then you're quick flipping through the book to try to, you know, figure out what to do. So yeah, this is the number one thing I would highly recommend. Then this is our Band-Aid box. It's a big box of a whole bunch of different Band-Aids. Pretty basic, really. We have a bunch of different sizes. I have them all sorted, and so we have small, we have medium, and then we have the medium large-ish, and then of course we have a variety of larger sizes. So some medium big, and then some, or medium big, really big. And then another couple things I keep in here, these are called butterfly stitches. 
basically they can hold your skin together while it heals without having to actually go get stitches. And stitches are one of the main things that people go to the ER for. And so, you know, um, the other box below it, I have something else that we do for, you know, stitches. But this can be really helpful. This can save a lot of money having something like this. You get hurt outside or at work or whatever, you throw something like this on. Not only did you not have to spend all the, did we not have to spend all of that time going to the ER and getting something done, we also saved ourselves a whole lot of money just treating it at home. So our bodies are designed to fix themselves. They're designed to be able to heal with our immune system. Very, very complex system and it's very good at its job. And so if you just trust it to do what it's supposed to do, it will do it. You know, sometimes of course problems will arise, but you know, providing it what it needs, holding the skin together while it heals, may be all it needs. And so something like butterfly stitches can really help. So this is the next box. It has a large variety of items in here. Um, let's see, let me go ahead and open it. So we have a little variety of things to, um, you know, clean wounds and things like this. This looks like a chapstick tube, but um, it's actually a homemade like antibiotic ointment that I make. I had a video for that a long time ago. Um, you could check that out if you want to, but we really enjoy this. It works really well. It also has a pain reliever, so when you get hurt or the kids get hurt or whatnot, we can go ahead and take care of that at home. I also have some of the traditional ones, but we really prefer the, uh, the homemade one. Um, some eye drops. You know, a lot of people go to the ER when they get things in their eye, and a lot of times what they'll just do is flush it out, and so you can do that sort of thing at home. We can do that sort of thing at home with some eye drops. Um, let's see what else we have. We have some thermometers and some covers, you know, of course, so we definitely want to make sure to monitor fevers so that they don't get too high, and then we can, you know, take action when it does get too high. I also have some other stuff for cleaning, that sort of thing. Um, tweezers, another really good one. Um, just something as simple as some tweezers can get out some metal or, you know, just anything. Big splinters and different things like that. We can get these types of objects out just with a simple pair of tweezers and then we don't have to go to the ER. I'm, you'd be surprised how many people go to the doctor over something like that. This is another thing I keep stocked. Um, this is Gorilla Glue. I had a friend who had a son who fell and hit his head and so they went to the doctor and instead of stitching it with you know some traditional stitch methods the nurse there actually just held the skin together and then did what my friend claimed to be a very crude job of gluing it together she did not even clean it or anything the doctor came in looked at it and said yeah this is good and she's like well which the nurse didn't even clean it i mean is that the way you're supposed to do things and he's like well because the injury was inside it was up to her, she could decide to clean it or not, you know, it's not going to be as likely to get infected because it was inside, and so it's okay that she decided not to. And so my friend was really mad. She ended up with an $800 bill for going to the ER with her son when she could have just had some Gorilla Glue at home and she could have done a cleaner job and not gotten it all in her, his hair. Um, again, this is just her story, this isn't necessarily the way everyone is going to get treated at the ER, but you know, and then she said she would have at least cleaned it. So she felt like she could have done a better job taking care of it at home than she did going to the ER and spending all that money. And of course, spending all that time. And she also has five kids, so having to drag all of them to the ER and keep them all together and happy while he gets treated and then bring them all back home, it would have been so much easier if she would have just, you know, had some of this. So yeah, I keep this now. Um, I call it liquid stitches. So in case we get, you know, really hurt, we can also, you know, instead of just using the butterfly stitches, we can also use the glue. So the Gorilla brand is what they use um, in many of the ERs, and so that's what I have packed too. This is called an otoscope. This is one of those lighted things that you can use to look in children's throats and in their ears and things, and this thing can be a huge lifesaver because, you know, children oftentimes look at like ear aches and things like that, and so you can check to see what it looks like inside their ear if you have something like this at home, and then we know what to do in the event of um, an earache, which if you would like to know our recipe, I actually just use a little bit of peroxide and a bit of colloidal silver. So I'll use about a teaspoon of this and then I'll mix it with about three drops of the colloidal silver and then um, I'll pour that in their ear you know once or twice a day and it usually clears up within the day. And last time my daughter was complaining her ear hurt and I put it in there literally five minutes later she said her ear felt better. So earaches are usually when you get bacteria in your ear 
and it can cause an infection. You know, um, those two items both kill bacteria, so putting that directly in the ear and then killing the bacteria makes it feel better immediately. Whereas if you go to the doctor, they'll probably just give you antibiotics and that, of course, kills the bacteria in your whole body. In my opinion, that doesn't make sense. So, anyway, there you go. Otoscope can really make um, a mom's life a lot easier so you don't have to go to the doctor over, you know, checking out their ears and things like that. And then the last box, um, I have some eye drops for pink eye. This is a traditional, you know, thing that you would get from the doctor. We had some an issue with pink eye with my daughter a little while ago, and I tried colloidal silver and it didn't work, so I had to get the, uh, the doctor version, like I said. We have some gauze and some tape in case somebody has a really big cut. You know, some uh, alcohol pads, I really don't like to use those. I prefer, um, you know, more crunchy methods of cleaning things up and whatnot. And so that's a lot of the medical supplies we have stocked. This is another thing we got on Amazon, and it was actually really inexpensive. It's a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff. Um, this is actually pretty neat to be able to use. It really makes me feel like a nurse at home. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But anyway, so but with the stethoscope, you can monitor people's like heart rate. You can, you know, listen to their lungs and see if, you know, when they have a cold or something, if it's, you know, um, get, they're getting a lot of congestion in there. And then I'll better know, you know, if it's something serious and we really need to go or if it's okay, you know. Uh, it's nothing too bad or whatnot and things like that and you know a lot of people have um, blood pressure issues and so if you can check that at home again that can save you a lot of time at the doctor's office um, so we have I don't really like to use this for allergies but I do have some antihistamines because again this is all they do when we go to the when um, you go to the doctor this is all they give you when you have a spider bite or something like that and so just having some adult and children's version of this can make it to where we don't have to go to the doctor for them to do the same exact thing. Witch Hazel, I use this for a lot of things. Um, it's really good in my deodorant, of course, those of you that have followed my channel for a while. Um, but it also helps um, with swelling and things like that, so I'll use this on that sort of thing. Hydrogen peroxide isn't necessarily my favorite way of cleaning wounds, but it's good for a lot of things, and so we use this for a lot of things. I don't want the video to be too long, so I'm going to just make this kind of quick here. Colloidal silver, very good anti-biotic. Um, we keep a variety of different like herbs and things for our sick care, you know, and natural antibiotics. Sometimes when we get sick, you know, just a little extra vitamin C can help a lot. Activated charcoal is good for removing poisons and things like that. Um, headaches, of course, are pretty common, so we just treat them at home homeopathically. What else? I do keep a little acetaminophen at home, mainly just because I want to make sure in the event that somebody does get a high fever, we can treat it without it becoming an issue. Because again, you know, high fevers can be deadly. Um, aloe vera, I like to use this just um, in a spray bottle in case we get burnt. I get burnt a lot, I cook every single day, and sometimes I'm, you know, less careful around the oven and the stove. So yeah, just spraying it on burns and things like that, that can help a lot. And then, of course, my first aid book. I also have um, my toothpaste, which I use for things like uh, bug bites and things like that. Um, it's like a knock-off earth paste, and it uses Redmond clay. Um, if you want more information on that, I do have a video for that, of course, too. Um, but, yeah, whenever we get, like, a bug bite or things like that, we'll just stick it on there, and that'll draw out a lot of the poisons and things like that. So it's really helpful. So here's a small example of what the toothpaste looks like. It is, it's the clay um, mixture and then it's really, you know, um, good at doing what it's supposed to do. You know, again, for more information, you could check out um, the video on how to use that. But we use that a lot, actually. And then the last thing I use is um, sunscreen. <laughs> That's not just good for the sun, I have actually found out. When I posted that video, I had done a lot of, you know, research and put together that recipe. And since then, I've been using it for different things because in my purse, I keep um, like a thieves spray as like a natural hand sanitizer and then a bottle of this. We went um, hiking and my daughter wore shorts and she brushed up against something and it gave her um, some little hives all over her leg. Well, I went ahead and put this on there thinking, okay, it's, you know, just going to help soothe it at least so it hopefully won't itch. But it actually made the hives go away. Essential oils, especially uh, lavender essential oil, helped a lot with hives, and that's what I use in my sunscreen. 
So I was like, that's perfect. It's like a, you know, universal thing that helps a lot of things. You know, sunscreen, get a few hives, itchy skin. And then another time I was actually on the way to the gym with my mom and I realized I had forgotten my deodorant and not wanting to be stinky at the gym. Um, knowing that this homemade sunscreen has zinc oxide and lavender oil in it, both of which make really good you know, natural deodorants, I went ahead and slapped a little bit of this in my armpits and it actually worked really good. So yeah, the sunscreen, not just good for the sun, it can also treat um, several other things I have found. So yeah, as you can see, just having a few basic things stocked and around, and of course the knowledge on what to do, can really help a lot. You know, you can save yourself a ton of time not having to be stuck in, you know, an ER or an urgent care facility, etc or even, you know, having to bug a doctor over something that you could treat at home and, you know, again, save yourself a lot of money in the long run. For us, I don't even know how much money we've saved staying out of the doctor's office, but I'm sure it's quite a bit. <laughs> so I hope you found this video helpful um, with me explaining what it is that we do in case, you know, again, I don't want to give advice and say, you know, you know, if you want to do home stuff because I don't want to, you know, recommend anything like that. I'm not a healthcare professional but I do have some pretty good uh, methods that have worked for us at home. And I'm Frugal Green Girl, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.